another episode on the Virtual Shelling Network. I'm Laura Catherine, and I'm here with Dustin on Kais Island. I have not been here in a while. I'm super excited to check it out and see what we can find. It's such a beautiful day here in Southwest Florida, just south of Marco Island. Kais is such a cool spot to shell. As you guys can see, there's like rack line, rack line, rack line, rack line, rack line. Like there's just rack lines everywhere of some fun treasures to be found. We're going to go over to the golf side. I'm going to try not to get distracted here with all of the mini tinies. As you guys can see, the coffee grounds right here and floating in the water. This is like mini tiny heaven. So if you are somebody that loves minis and tinies and you want to come to the beach and just sit on a beach chair or sit on a beach towel and shell for the teeny tiny shells, this is where you come. There are just so many. I'll kind of get down here. I'm not going to shell. I'm just going to show you. I'm not even looking. I'm just I'm letting you guys look because if I start, you guys know I won't be able to stop. So I'm just going to do a quick little span so you guys can see the little mini teeny tiny shells. There's so many of them. And I'm being good because if I if I start to pick up so minis and tinies to me are like potato chips. Like I can't pick up just one. And if I start to shell, I will just stay here and shell. And I won't do anything else. Okay, so we're gonna head over to the other side of the island, the golf side, and check out and see what is going on over there. I will tell you, um, when you come out to these islands to shell, it's a really good idea to wear some type of footwear on your shoes, not flip-flops, um, but some type of beach shoes. Um, Fit Kicks are really good. There's a couple um, kind of off brands on Amazon that I really like. Um, and then, you know, you could always wear just sneakers or tennis shoes too, but if you go in the water, that's not going to be super fun. Um, there's lots of shells and broken shells and stumps and tree roots and all kinds of things that you can potentially trip on and step on. So I highly recommend um, making sure that you wear some footwear when you come out here just to keep your feet safe. All right, here we are. We have made it to the Gulf side. You guys can see the waves out there. And it is actually low tide, which is great for shelling. Um, as I walk through here, you guys will see some crushed shell piles. So this is also a great place to look for your minis and tiny shells. You'll see some higher rack lines. So there's always going to be fun stuff in these higher rack lines too. But where I like to shell the most here at Kais is down here in the mud. <laughs> kind of come down here um, where the tide has receded and things are getting uncovered. And this is where you'll find some really cool shells. One of the shells here on Kais that is really common are the Sunray Venus. So I know a lot of you love those. Um, you will sometimes find them intact, but just remember to check to make sure they're completely empty. A lot of times um, when they get stuck in the high rack line up here, you'll find them whole. Um, like this is a good example here. So like this one here is no longer alive, but it's still got critter in there and that's gonna smell like horribly bad. So I don't recommend taking that shell. You'll find plenty more. I would stick with, with taking shells that are already cleaned out for you. So just make sure that you're checking that before you put them in your shell bag. 
Otherwise, your whole shell bag and your car or your suitcase or whatever you put your shell bag in is going to stink pretty bad. So we're gonna come down here. We're gonna see if we can find anything fun. Oh, here's some little fish that got stuck in the, stuck in the tide. But this is where you can sometimes find some fun buried shells. Here's a really pretty orange scallop. You guys know I love orange scallops. Lots of fighting conks. So you can see all of the Sunray Venus shells. There's so many. And here's a good example of a shell buried. So you're just seeing the the top of that really pretty tulip. So always make sure that you're, you know, not just looking for whole shells, but you're looking for things sticking out of the sand. A lot of times they'll get stuck around these root systems. So you can see some of these conks in here. And a lot of times you guys are like, oh my gosh, why aren't you picking them up? Some days I do, and some days I just leave them for other shellers, or I really just, you know, there's no way I can take home every single shell. There's a little olive right here. Pretty shiny little olive. And then here we have a sand dollar. Pretty sand dollar. So you guys will see the sand dollar is still dark. That does not mean that it's alive just because it's dark. The sand dollar is no longer alive. You can tell, oh look, there's a little critter on the bottom. Let me get him out. Um, you can tell because there's no spines or little legs or little feet left on the sand dollar. It's completely smooth and it's starting to bleach out. So this will turn white in the sun or if you take it home and you put it in some bleach, it'll bleach out really nicely. So. That's a cool find here. Usually we don't find a lot of sand dollars on kites. Usually that's Dickman's find. And over here, I see another, there's a little tool up here. And then another one buried here. a big horse conch. So the big shells are, are definitely out here. Sometimes you'll find some big shells underneath these tree roots. They'll get stuck. So always check around the tree roots um, when you're out here on kites for sure. Love those Sunray Venus. And sometimes, you know, this is a good example, like right here, all you see is just a little part of the shell. So always be looking for just little, little parts of the shell peeking out like that. You guys can see where we are. You can see Marco Island there in the distance. So Dickman's is right across, and then Marco is the next island up. I highly recommend checking out Marco Island if you're looking to vacation, come down to Southwest Florida this year. Maybe some of you are used to going to Sanibel or Fort Myers Beach, and those are not going to be options this year due to the hurricane. I highly suggest checking out Marco Island. It's where um, Dustin and I both grew up down here and just love it. It's such a great island. Um, lots of hotels, lots of restaurants, lots of fun things to do. Great shelling on the beaches. And then also, of course, you have access to these islands via boat. Check out this uh, 
spiny jewel box. It is alive. You'll know because you won't be able to you won't be able to open it. So it's nice seeing the live shells here. Let's see what else we can find. Oh, look at this pretty orange scallop. When you guys come here to Kais, it all depends on what the tide's doing, but if the tide is going out or coming in, particularly if it's coming in, I would recommend shelling down here first because it's only a matter of time before this all gets covered and then you're not able to see what's here. And then I would go ahead and shell the rack lines and you can see the coffee grounds here and the bubble shells. Those are gonna be your uh, telltale signs for tinies, minis and tinies. So I like to shell when the tide is low and I have the opportunity down here while all of this stuff is uncovered. You never know what's, what's there. You'll never know what, you know what you'll find, but once this is covered with water, you're kind of done. So look at this pretty conch right here too. shake it out. Look how pretty that is. That's a pretty conch. That pattern. Beautiful. So that's just a tip for you. Um, as you are shelling this island to just keep in mind what the tide is doing. And if you're not sure, ask your tour guide or whoever you're with. They'll be able to tell you what the tide is doing. Or you can also check an app. Tides Near Me is a good app on your phone. Or there's, you know, you can Google tide charts and there's a bunch of them they're very easy to read it just tells you the time of high tide and low tide but that's what i recommend doing is shelling down here while you can and then when the tide comes in you can always go up to the higher rock lines and shell there all right so when you see all these little root systems poking up this is a great place to really look down because shells get caught in these and then sand covers them this is where sometimes you'll find some really cool stuff, but you have to be patient. You have to look close. There's a little cute conch stuck in there. So many conchs, oh my goodness. If you're looking for conchs, this is the place. Here's a nice big olive right here. Nice chunky olive. Ooh. Look at that horse conch. I wonder if it's just a piece. Oh, it is just a piece, but that's what you look for. Just like that. Look for just a little bit sticking out of the sand. And you know, sometimes it's gonna be whole and sometimes it's not, but I'll tell you, those times that you pull out a big true tulip or a genonia or an alphabet cone, you'll be, you'll be so excited. <laughs> I just had um, another sheller on the beach stop me and she asked me um, if this is a good place to find genonias. And it is, I found um, a genonia on Kais before. But I always tell people like, you don't find the genonia, the genonia finds you. So if, if it is your day, uh, you'll see it. They're here. Um, the one that I found here was completely buried, only just a tiny little a little bit of the spots, a uh, little piece of the spots was showing above the sand and I actually thought it was, it was broken, but it wasn't. And other times, you know, sometimes they'll just be laying there. There's a pretty olive. But they are here to be found, just like alphabet cones. I get just as excited to find really pretty alphabet cones. Sometimes they're in a boat. Speaking of alphabet cone, speaking of right here, there you have it. Sometimes they're in abundance and sometimes, you know, you only find one, but I love finding pretty alphabet cones. I just, I know they're not as uh, rare as a genonia, but they're still on that uncommon list of shells 
that are highly sought after that shellers love to find. So if you can find an alphabet cone, fantastic. Always be looking for color and looking for spots. Spots are the giveaway. And you guys have told me before in the past, I mean, there's so many episodes where you guys are like, oh, you missed a tulip or you missed this shell. And I did, I mean, it, you know, there's no way that you're gonna see every single shell. So I always tell people like, don't worry if there's other shellers ahead of you. Here's a pretty tulip right here. Because there's no way that they're gonna see every single shell. Sometimes shellers are out here and they're just looking for like, a couple specific shells so they're really not focused in on anything else so I know a lot of people worry about that oh my gosh there's so many shellers here but nobody's gonna find every shell especially with the tide always moving and always changing so don't worry about it just just focus on what you're doing shell for you you will find those special shells you will find cool stuff I've been uh I've been shelling before. I remember distinctly a day on Sanibel when there was a ton of shellers there in a big shell pile. And right when this one lady like moved, this other lady came in and she found a genonia, like right where this other lady was shelling. And the other lady just didn't see it or didn't happen to uncover it or whatever. So don't, don't get discouraged if there's other shellers around. It's totally fine. You're still gonna have tons of treasures when you leave. Oh, here's a little, a little baby horse conch. So cute. The little white tip, the white tip disappears as they get older. All right, guys, on my way back, I'm gonna go ahead and shell the rack line so you guys can kind of see. Always make sure like this conch, okay, it has a critter in it. Critter is not alive anymore, but it's still in there. So make sure you're checking because that would like really stink up your shell bag. It's a really pretty olive. So always make sure that you're, you're checking. Pretty lace. horse conch. Look how cute. Oh, he's got a little crack in it though. And this is a good place for your minis. a little chance to shell here in this little this little pile oh look do you guys see the pink do you see the rose murex look how pretty it's a little broken a little damaged but this is so pretty one of the more rare finds so that's your rose murex. Somebody was asking me about that if, if I found them. I have, they're not overly common, but they are here. So that's really fun. Here's a little cone. Here's an example of looking for spots. So here's your alphabet cone. It's just the, the top part, but it's still cool. It's still a cool find. I'm always keeping my eyes open for orange and spots or my orange, pink and spots are kind of my, my three colors that I look out for the most. Like here's a little lace. And 
And here's the top. I hope I'm focused. I literally can't see my screen. Between the glare of the sun and my polarized glasses. I can't see. Let's see what we got down here. I'm trying to stay out of my shadow. Oh, here's a little gaudy. I haven't found a gaudy in a while. A little gaudy nautica. There. That's fun. Oh, here's a fun find. Here's a horseshoe crab. We don't find many of these around here. Let's see what kind of shape he's in. So his shell is a little bit cracked here. And then when you turn him over, you'll see this looks like just a shed. This could just be a shed. Um, what you'll want to do, regardless if it's a shed or the actual critter is in there, you're going to gently separate this bottom from the top here. And if you peel it out, hold on, I need two hands. All right, there we go. And then you can dump the sand out and then you'll have just the shell with the tail. And it makes a nice little, uh, nice little display critter to take home. So they look like little helmets. This one's a little bit cracked. So if they're cracked like this, usually they end up cracking more. It's really hard to kind of stop that crack from happening. But this is what they look like. Super fun. All right, guys, I am heading back to the other end of the island to find Dustin. I wanted to thank you guys so much for tuning in and joining me on this episode here at Kais Island. If you have any questions, comments, or requests, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at virtualshelling at gmail.com. Also, if you are going to be visiting Marco, uh, we'd love to know about it. Let us know if you'll be down here. If you'd like to take a tour, go wakeboarding, go tubing, come out to some of the beaches uh, that you can only get to by boat, please check out our website markowatersports.com. Until next time, have a shelltastic day and we'll see you again soon. Bye!